Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought, of course, that I would talk about this little video from this channel that I thought would be very particularly interesting. And for those of you that have been uh, around my channel long enough, you know that a lot of the videos that I like to review, that they're from the LDBC or new media. But I've recently been asked uh, from a couple of people, I believe, maybe even a few people, I can't remember, but um, for them, for me to review a uh, fight channel by the name of Fight Film. And when I heard this man's voice, I actually recognized him from many years ago. For those of you that have not been around YouTube long enough within that of the boxing scene, of course, 10 years ago, Dante's Boxing Nation and uh, Blue Blood Sports TV and uh, that of Boxing Ego, those guys are, you know, they, they were around, but they were still kind of getting their start. I had a way smaller channel uh, back then, and one of the channels I believe that I ended up seeing was that of a channel called Precise Presenter, and that's exactly who this gentleman is right here. Precise Presenter was a boxing channel way back in the day, at least 10 years ago, uh, when I was a lot younger. Uh, I believe even at one point in time he commented on my channel, especially about a Miguel Cotto and Antonio Margarito uh, topic. But, you know, some people overall, they, they asked me to review this video because uh, they wanted me to review a video from a channel that they also believed was racially motivated, but that was not associated with the LDBC and new media. And what I will say is this, 10 years ago when I did end up watching Mr. Precise Presenter, he also did come across to me as very racially motivated, uh, just of course for a different demographic. But to be fair, I have not watched him in many years, so I can't really tell you. But he does come across apparently... Uh, as still racially motivated to other people who apparently have watched his channel. But within this video, because I couldn't really find another video that I found, you know, at least relevant enough to review at the moment, at least with some of the points that were going to be brought up in the video. So I thought that I would talk about Mr. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez. And precise presenter, you know, at least with this video, he does appear to be a little bit harsh on Mr. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, but... I can somewhat respect harsh critique because I'm also a very harsh criticizer as well, and I'm very blunt and honest. But Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, of course, he recently ended up having a very great performance over the former top 10 pound for pound fighter in many people's eyes in Mr. Juan Francisco Estrada. And of course, I believe he was able to get the stoppage within that of seven rounds. And other than that, of course, of getting knocked down in that of the sixth round, he had an extremely dominant performance. And I thought he looked very talented and very special. And Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, I've been hearing about him now for the past couple of years, but I never really had watched a full fight of his until recently. And what I will state is this, Mr. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, he is the replacement and was supposed to be the recent replacement of whatever was supposed to be the most dominant fighter of these lower weight classes that had been of the past generation. <clears throat> Excuse me. So any of the Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez's, any of the Juan Francisco Estrada's, the Sarung v size. Those guys, their time is now done. And Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, he is now supposed to be their replacement for the dominant Latino fighter overall within those weight classes. Now, the question is about Mr. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, because I do believe that he is extremely talented and very dominant. I don't really have a question about if he's going to defeat a multitude of some of these other fighters, you know, that maybe he may face within some of these weight classes. Maybe even if he fights like that of a Steve on Cool Boy Fulton. I have no doubt that more than likely that Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez is going to defeat some of those fighters. But of course, the main fighter that appears to be a thorn in everybody's side, or is pretty much the kingpin at around those lower weight classes, is the Japanese monster Mr. Noya Inoue. And apparently there's been some rumors and rumblings about that fight potentially happening. And that's going to be very interesting because I do wonder if they're going to be interested in holding that fight in Japan. And also how they're going to promote Mr. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez because I think that he has a lot of potential. I believe that he is a Mexican fighter, and of course, he has a very entertaining style. He is extremely gifted and extremely talented. So I'm not really sure if you'd want to throw Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez in the ring with a monster like the Oya Inoue at this moment in time. Of course, Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, there might be certain advantages possibly that he would have over Inoue. But Inoue, <laughs> that man is like the Japanese version of Roy Jones Jr. Not only is he extremely skilled... But on top of that, his physical talent is just out of this <laughs> out of this world. So once again, it's going to be interesting to see that. But, you know, Mr. Mister Overall Fight Film here, he's going to be talking about Mr. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez uh, in somewhat of a criticizing light. I just thought that it was interesting. But anyways, let's get into it. Let's see what the man has to say. 
When Oscar De La Hoya came up from lightweight to fight Julio Cesar Chavez, who had by then been fighting at 140 pounds for the better part of the decade, was he the smaller man? When Oscar De La Hoya absolutely masterclassed the aging champion at the age of, I don't know, he was probably 10 years younger or something like that. Chavez was 33. Did he get any credit for stopping Julio Cesar Chavez? Twice! Well, actually, to answer your question, Mr. Fight Film, yes, Oscar De La Hoya did get a decent amount of credit for stopping Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., but it's when people look back at Oscar De La Hoya's career as of now that people are starting to finally put his career into more of a correct retrospect. This is why whenever I have conversations about the debate between Oscar De La Hoya and Canelo Alvarez, to me, there's no debate about really who is the greater fighter between the two. To me, it's Canelo Alvarez, and I really don't even think it's a conversation. Because people always, you know, they say to me, they say, well, how can you say that? Because Oscar De La Hoya defeated two debatable top 10 fighters of all time, or two top 20 fighters of all time, within that of Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. and also that of Pernell Sweepy Whitaker. And that's a great thing that Oscar De La Hoya did that, because... <clears throat> even though Oscar De La Hoya, of course, was bigger than both of those guys, you know, just because you're bigger than someone doesn't mean that you're going to win. But that is how you determine who is going to be one of the next faces within that of your particular sport. If you're going to be the next best fighter of your generation, you're going to have to beat those fighters. And not only are you going to have to beat those fighters, but your true greatness and overall your true intelligence as a boxing you know, fighter or a martial artist is going to be when you start fighting prime level guys that are especially your own same size. So once again, that's why I stated with both Tiafima Lopez and Devin Haney, two of those guys were Vasily Lomachenko's replacement and Vasily Lomachenko didn't understand that within either of those fights. He didn't realize that Bob Aaron was trying to replace him overall with Tiafima Lopez and that they were also trying to replace him with Devin Haney. So even though, of course, that fight against that of uh, Devin Haney was very close, Lomachenko, of course, stated how could they give it to him. I thought that he won the fight. Lomachenko was never going to win that fight unless he clearly won it about eight rounds to four or nine rounds to three. It was never going to happen. They don't have any more use for Vasily Lomachenko unless to use him as a stepping stone to promote other black and Latin fighters like Javon Tang Davis, Shakur Stevenson, or other fighters like that. They don't have any more use for a European fighter that's almost going to be 37 years old. They don't care. <laughs> so once again, it is what it is. That's what Lomachenko had to realize. And, you know, that is how fighters eventually, you know, usually they end up facing a little bit of an aging champion, but a champion that still is clearly at an A-grade point in their career and someone that may even be potentially smaller. That is usually how the pattern or the paradigm has been for the past, I don't know how many years. It happened with Oscar De La Hoya and Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. It happened overall with Lomachenko and Devin Haney and Tiafimo Lopez. And they also tried to do it with Floyd Mayer the Jr. when they put him in the ring against Canelo Alvarez. But Floyd Mayer the Jr. was at a greater point and was even greater than they once anticipated. And they still tried to give Canelo Alvarez that fight as much as possible. And that's why Canelo Alvarez right now, he's very reluctant to even talk about the David Benavidez fight unless he's going to get 200 to 250 million. Because Canelo Alvarez realizes that they have finally found my replacement in terms of overall the Mexican face of boxing. They already found his replacement. They've been planning to try and replace Canelo Alvarez with David Benavidez now for the past few years. And Canelo Alvarez realizes it. That's why, <laughs> that's why once again, you know, Canelo Alvarez is making recent statements like it's going to sadden me one day that I have to retire from the sport and all this stuff. Because Canelo realizes that his time is coming to an end, you know, because, you know, he's still there. He's still one of the top fighters, but... He's in the same position right now that Chavez Sr., you know, overall was when, you know, uh, he fought Oscar De La Hoya. He's in the same position right now that uh, uh, Oscar De La Hoya was when he eventually fought Floyd Mayer the Jr. He's in the same position. They are looking to shift the tides, you know. So once again, that's why <laughs> Canelo Alvarez, I don't think overall that he's super excited about that fight. I think he wants to make this ride, you know, as long as possible. And Canelo Alvarez states that, if you're going to try to replace me or if you're going to, you know, try to make me fight this David Benavidez, you're going to make it worth my while and you're going to give me a very big payday. I mean, maybe at the time a little bit, but in retrospect, no, not really. That was supposed to happen. And Oscar De La Hoya, at the end of the day, <clears throat> excuse me, my apologies. 
Oscar De La Hoya at the end of the day, once again, great fighter, but also a little bit one of the more overrated boxers within history. Oscar De La Hoya is a great boxer, but he's on the same level as Marquez. He's on the same level as Miguel Cotto. He's on the same level as Thomas Hearns. That's the same level that he's on. He's not any higher than those guys because Oscar De La Hoya, throughout a lot of the bigger fights of his career, could not win them, especially once he started moving up the weight classes and started facing guys that he really was similar in size to. De La Hoya really should have been fighting at the 147 and 154 pound weight class. That's why when people state that, oh, well, Oscar De La Hoya defeated Pernell Sweepy Whitaker and Chavez Sr., right, but he was supposed to defeat those guys. Oscar De La Hoya is damn near six feet tall. He's a guy that has a 76 arm reach. Those guys are, what, five foot six, five foot seven? Natural 135 pounders, I'm sorry, but if those are the only two biggest wins in your career, I'm sorry, but to me that really states that once you started moving up the weight classes that you couldn't really beat those guys. And that's why Bernard Hopkins, that's why I also am a little bit, you know, he was a great fighter and he definitely defeated some great, you know, overall fighters that maybe would have been similar in size, you know, maybe like Kelly Pavlik and some other guys like that. It isn't like Bernard Hopkins never beat good fighters. But when he did face, you know, the generational talents like Joe Calzaghe or Roy Jones Jr. or even Chad Dawson at one point in time or Jermaine Taylor, he couldn't beat those guys. That's why Bernard Hopkins, in my view, he's a great fighter, but he's not as great as what a lot of people try to state that he is. The biggest win of his career, the two biggest wins of his career are Felix Tito Trinidad and Oscar De La Hoya, which is great. But at the end of the day, those two fighters were nowhere near really the same size as Bernard Hopkins. So once again, Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, we're going to see how truly great that he is. I think that he was more similar in size to Juan Francisco Estrada than what, say, Oscar De La Hoya was to Chavez Sr. But I understand what Mr. Precise present, or excuse me, I understand overall what Mr. Uh, Fight Film is trying to state here. I think Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez deserves a lot of credit, and in my view, this enters him into the top 10 pound per pound. But in my view, it does not quite enter him yet into the top 5 pound per pound, and certainly not as the number 1 pound per pound fighter, but it puts him right there, in my view, with Javon Tang Davis, maybe a Shakur Stevenson, and maybe some other guys. <clears throat> because not only <laughs> did Bam Bam Rodriguez beat Juan Francisco Estrada, he stopped him. It was so annoying hearing the worst commentator in boxing history calling Bam Rodriguez the smaller man when Bam, when he was, what, how old was he? 12, 13, <laughs> fought at super featherweight. Now, if you're a concealed carrier, you probably want to find the perfect holster. Doesn't everybody. Mm -hmm. That's why you probably got one of these. You may have fought at super featherweight <clears throat> in 2017. How old is he now? 24. <laughs> when he... <laughs> I will say this, Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez did look like the bigger opponent to me as well. And once again, certain people will state that this man was smaller moving up and weight, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not always someone that feeds into that bullshit either. Because like, you know, for example, when I reviewed Dante's Boxing Nation's videos, he's saying that old Crawford is facing bigger guys at the welterweight class. Dude, Terrence Crawford is 5'8 with a 74 inch arm range. And on top of that, he rehydrates to 160 pounds. He's bigger than what a Floyd Mayweather Jr. was. He's a natural welterweight. So when he was, I don't know. And that's why when I make the comparisons of Canelo Alvarez and also that of, you know, Terrence Bud Crawford, it has to be noted that when Canelo Alvarez moved up to the 168-pound weight class and also the 175-pound weight class, he was smaller than pretty much everyone else there. And that's why when we talk about the history or, you know, how great some of those fighters are, that also has to be talked about a little bit because Crawford, for the first time, is probably going to be at a weight class, you know, in August against Israel Madrimov. For the first time ever, he's probably going to be against a fighter that is actually going to be a little bit bigger than him, at least in terms of weight. So we'll see overall what ends up happening. I mean, Errol Spence Jr. was probably a little bit bigger than him as well, you know, but there was other physical advantages that Crawford had, like the reach and other stuff like that. So it pretty much evened out. You do the math. When Bam was like 18. And Israel Madrimov, in my view, some people are trying to hype him up as this next Gennady Golovkin type of figure. I think that he's a very good fighter. I would maybe give him the grade of A-. minus. He is a champion, but at the end of the day, the man only has 11 total fights. And, <laughs> and he had a draw, I believe, recently, not too long ago. Now, from what I hear from one of my commentators, apparently it was because it ended early. You know, so I would have to see. But, uh, and then went to the scorecard. But anyways, once again, Madrimov, for those of you that don't know, the man has about a 67 to 68 inch arm reach. 
that Crawford is going to have six inches of reach over Israel Madrimov. And then when you take a look at it, he also, in my view, is not the most defensively sound fighter. He's not the worst, but he definitely is not someone that I would consider an excellent defensive fighter. In my personal view, I think Crawford will eventually stop him. But we'll see. 19 years old. He fought at super featherweight, right? A fight where, you know, he just didn't make weight or... And that's also another reason why Terrence Bud Crawford, why he didn't fight Jerome Boutsenis. Because Jerome Boutsenis would be the replacement for both Terrence Bud Crawford or that Errol Spence Jr. So Terrence Bud Crawford has no interest in a Jerome Boutsenis fight. Not as much, right? <clears throat> he went from 107 to 126, right? He's a snack athlete. He rehydrates probably 20 pounds. And he looked significantly bigger than the old man. Significantly. Now, well, I think that he looked a little bit bigger. I'm not going to claim significantly bigger. To me, it wasn't like an Oscar De La Hoya Chavez senior situation where Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez looked bigger by about two weight classes. But I would say that in my view that he looked bigger by about a weight class. So when people are claiming that Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez was quote unquote the smaller man, I agree. That's, <laughs> that's a little bit of marketing right there. Not in height. <clears throat> He was a little bit taller, and he looked to have a bit more reach. But look at his legs. Look at his head. Look at his upper body, the width of his shoulders. He looked significantly bigger. Estrada, for his part, you know, he never beat Chocolatito. Not once. And... He has gotten what? I personally thought that Juan Francisco Estrada kind of got <laughs> a little bit of a of a gift to say. I'm not going to say a complete gift, but in my personal view, I would have voted for Chocolate Tito in order to win uh, two out of three of those fights at the very least. At least a couple of gifts <laughs> in the last three years, four or five years or something like that, besides the Chocolate Tito fight. The guy should have never been anywhere close to that title that he had, right? But, but from what I do believe, Juan Francisco Estrada, he also did defeat Sarung Visay, I believe, once at least. Um, he also defeated, I, I believe that he defeated Carlos Cuadros. Maybe I'm wrong about that, I can't remember. Um, you know, but the third fight was very close. I could have win potentially either way. I probably would have gave it to Chocolate Tito, but to be fair, I'd have to rewatch the fight. It's not Bam's fault. I mean, The second fight, I would have definitely <laughs> gave the Chocolate Tito. I thought that it was not the best decision. He fights who they put in front of him, and it's not his fault that they robbed <clears throat> Chocolatito twice and then some other bum and um, Cuadras against Estrada. It's not his fault. He fights who they put in front of him. That was the guy that was considered the man, and, you know, he whooped his ass. But, I mean, he did get knocked down by a rusty, chinny... Old, stiff, slow Estrada, who was never really known for punching power. So that's not a good sign. Well, in my view, that's a little bit too harsh of a criticism. Uh, I mean, we we can nitpick all we want to, but at the end of the day, the kid obviously is very talented. Uh, Juan Francisco Estrada, I don't believe, has ever been stopped in his career. Not even close. Not against Sarong Visay, not against that Roman Chocolate Tito Gonzalez. I have to give Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez a certain amount of credit. Now, of course, if you want to bring up the points that uh, Juan Francisco Estrada had not fought in pretty much over a year, uh, you know, you can bring up that point. If you want to bring up the point that Bam Bam Rodriguez was a little bit bigger, if you want to bring up the point, you know, maybe of some other stuff, then absolutely, sure, you know, that can be brought up. But, <laughs> but you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm only going to be so harsh on Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez because Estrada, <coughs> excuse me, was probably looked at as one of the top 20 pound per pound fighters, uh, you know, or somewhere around there. And, you know, he is a very gifted and talented fighter. He was looked at as one of the greater and one of the better fighters within those weight classes. And it's not like it was a fight that went to split decision. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez did what he was supposed to do. He did what he was supposed to do. And if that Canelo Alvarez versus David Benavidez fight is happening, and if David Benavidez is truly going to be the best fighter of the next generation, He's going to have to pound Canelo Alvarez into submission or at least beat him very dominantly. 
just like what De- excuse me, just like what De La Hoya was able to do to Chavez, just like what Bam Bam Rodriguez was able to do to Estrada. That's what they're hoping for. David Benavides is Canelo Alvarez's replacement, at least for now. So once again, <laughs> David Benavides, we're gonna see truly how good he actually is soon. But we'll see. He's smart to- because David Benavides, even if he beats Canelo Alvarez, we're gonna see David Benavides truly how great he actually is when he starts facing guys like Demetri Bivol and Artibeta Beef and even some cruiserweights. Because David Benavides is not a 168 pounder. The man is a light heavyweight at the minimum. Chocolatito. He knows what time it is. <clears throat> it's funny because when Chocolatito fought Estrada in Mexico and so many people call that a robbery, right? He got the win. Then he fights him in America and the fights look exactly the same. I mean, not exactly, but they're basically the same fights. And Estrada gets to win, uh, even though he got beat up, just like in that first fight. I'm not going to say that he got beat up. It was a very close fight, but in my view, it clearly should have been edged to Chocolatito. I did not think that it was the best decision. I thought that Chocolatito, at least in the second fight, clearly got the more impactful punches. I thought that he was the aggressor and the impactful aggressor. Of course, you don't always judge a boxing fight off of who is the aggressor. Uh, at least on the front foot, but I thought that Chocolate Tito was the more impactful aggressor. I do not believe, in my view, that Estrada won that second fight, just in my personal view. So I, I somewhat agree. I'm not going to state that he got beat up necessarily because it was a very competitive fight. I think it was about seven rounds to five or eight rounds to four for Chocolate Tito, but in my view, it did go to the wrong guy. Let me take a sip of my tea, God damn it. But, I mean, look, it was a good performance by Bam. You know, he looked good. His power looked good. Um, well, in my view, it wasn't just a good performance by Bam Bam Rodriguez. It was a great performance. Now, when you want to talk about good performances, we're talking about Shakur Stevenson against, you know, that recent Armenian dude that he just fought. That's a quote-unquote good performance because I would not rank that performance really in my view as like an A plus performance and you know since Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez since he got knocked down in this fight you probably have to rank it a little bit lower than an A plus but I probably give him an A because at the end of the day I've never seen anyone make Juan Francisco Scrata you know look this vulnerable now of course was this supposed to happen because Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez is younger and more active and you know uh, going to be the next guy yes but all that tells me is that he did what he was supposed to do, and not everyone does. So at the end of the day, Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, he did uh, overall, once again, what he was supposed to do, and I thought that he showed uh, showed it off with flying colors. But there's nothing special about the guy. I'm sorry. That I personally can't agree with. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, in my view, is a very special fighter. I think that he is very fast, and I think that he has great feet. I think that he is a very good defensive fighter. Now, the one thing I will say about Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez is a lot like Vasily Lomachenko. He uses that high guard quite a bit. He actually fights a lot like Vasily Lomachenko. He loves to use angles. You know, he's a very great mover. He is always changing levels and always moving his head. Basically, he's the Mexican version of Vasily Lomachenko. But it's going to be up to him if he can improve on some of on some of the weaknesses that Lomachenko ended up having in his style, not protecting to the body very well, having that high guard to the point to where his torso was open for an attack. So we'll see what Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez is able to do, but so far he seems like an extremely special fighter. So I cannot agree overall with the fact that, quote-unquote, that he's not special. You know, they have carefully picked and cho- <clears throat> chosen. They have... Bleh. I'm tired. They had carefully picked and chosen his opponents up until this point. He's had, again, you know, Estrada was in the position that he was in. And he fought him and he took his belt. And I give him credit for Sonny Lispin, Edwards, you know, but... I forgot that that was another big fight that was happening. Sonny Edwards, very decent boxer now, of course... He doesn't really have any punching power. <laughs> but Sonny Edwards, you know, is a very decent boxer, you know, definitely no doubt about it. And uh, I think that he won his last fight. But if I'm wrong about that, someone would have to correct me. 
But once again, the fight that's going to be really interesting is going to be that Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez versus Noya Inoue fight. And of course, another kid that I want to look after is going to be that Bruce Carrington kid, that Shoe Shoe kid. We'll see where he goes. You know, that's Sonny Lisbon. <clears throat> If you make at least 150 grand a year and you're still embarrassed to take your shirt off at the pool, I'll get you shredded like... And you don't get me wrong, you know, he's a good fighter, he's a promising fighter, but the fanfare, oh my god, it's just out of hand. It's well, it depends on what you mean by out of hand, sir. <laughs> we need to see where Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez deserves to be ranked. In my view, a fighter where, and you know... When you talk about the fanfare being a little bit overrated, uh, I, I would probably say a little bit of Javante Tank Davis, at least when we talk about him debatably being the number one pound for pound fighter. It's just a little bit too soon for that, in my view, when you have not really ever fought a potential top 10 pound for pound fighter, I can't have you in that conversation, or even a top 20 pound for pound fighter. I can have you potentially there, even if you fight a top 20 pound for pound fighter. Javante Tank Davis has never even fought anything close to a top 20 pound for pound fighter. It is what it is. In a way, Usyk, you know, Fury, Canelo Alvarez, Terrence Crawford, all those guys have done it in their career. So that's why at one point in time, I've all had that had them uh, within that conversation. That wasn't anywhere. And Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, what I will state is this. He has to be right there and right now with Javante Tang Davis. And I know that a lot of the LDBC and new media guys and all that other stuff, they may not like it. At the end of the day, yes. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, he probably even has a better resume than Javante Tang Davis, at least debatably, because he has one fighter that probably would have been ranked within the top 20 pound per pound. Javante Tang Davis, you know, he's got some decent names on there, like Ryan Garcia and Frank Martin. I would say that both of those wins are probably A grade level, or on the A minus level at least. But I'm sorry, I just don't count Isaac Pipple Cruz, nor Roly Romero, nor Hector Garcia, nor Mario Barrios as A grade level wins. Those are not multi dimensional A grade level fighters. All right. You know, so when people when people try to tell you this shit about how many different styles, you know, that he's fought all this other bullshit. He's fought Latino fighters that were never, ever really going to have a chance in the first place against him and that he was going to be able to knock out whenever he pretty much pumped on the gas. So please, please spare me. Close to his prime. I mean, his and he was coming off a year and a half layoff and it looked like well we can state overall that juan francisco estrada is not at his absolute prime or not at his best but you know or, or not at his absolute peak that's something that we can state but the thing that i also want to state here is that just because someone is not at their absolute peak doesn't mean that they're still not an a grade level champion juan francisco estrada in my view still would be an a grade level champion now it's going to be hard to clarify because he may never be the same again after this <laughs> but this happens all the time you know i've heard it overall you know when people stated that tyson fury he beat a washed up Vladimir Klitschko. No, he didn't beat a washed up Vladimir Klitschko. He just beat an aging champion that still was an A grade level fighter, not his absolute peak anymore. Tyson Fury did what he was supposed to do in order to become the next possible best heavyweight of the world. All right, that's what he was supposed to do. Devin Haney and Tiafima Lopez, they did what they were supposed to do against Vasily Lomachenko. Oscar De La Hoya at one point in time did what he was supposed to do against Chavez Sr. It doesn't mean that those fighters still will not were not at good points in their career. It just means that their time eventually came to an end. And it's the same thing with Juan Francisco Estrada. Was this a fight uh, between a guy that was at his absolute peak versus a guy that was also at his absolute peak? No, it wasn't. It was a guy that was, you know, probably reaching his peak versus a guy that was reaching, you know, the end of his career, but still is a very, very great champion. You know, kind of like an old lion, uh, you know, uh, when they finally get ripped away from their pack and they're no longer, you know, uh, good enough to lead that pack. Eventually, there's going to be a lion that is going to be good enough to take the pack from you. And that's just what happened to Mr. Juan Francisco Estrada. It happens. He was. He, he was so stiff. He didn't have any of the fluidity that he's shown in the past. He didn't, he didn't have, he looked. Oh my God! He was so stationary. His hands were so slow. He, I'm not gonna say. Well, Juan Francisco Estrada has never really been a speed demon. <laughs> Juan Francisco Estrada is not an Oscar De La Hoya or a Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez. So what this was really a mix of is that Juan Francisco Estrada he's just aging a little bit as a champion and a guy overall to where once again he met his replacement. And on top of that, Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez is just more skilled <laughs> as a fighter than what Juan Francisco Estrada ever was. It just is what it is.
couldn't pull the trigger, but you could see him hesitating and like freezing after he would throw a punch. Whereas before, Juan Francisco Estrada is not a guy that's always going to get you with volume. What Juan Francisco Estrada tries to do is that he tries to outbox you and he tries to use lateral movement, which of course can be a very great thing. But Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, there just wasn't anything. There, there just wasn't anything that he ended up beating Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez in. Not the footwork, not the foot speed, not the head movement, not the movement. He had never seen anything like this before. You know, once again, it's like a lion overall that finally meets a very, very young lion. And, you know, he was able to fight off some of the other lions previously. But not only is he a little bit older, but but this lion, something's different about this guy. Something's different about this individual. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez is just a completely different individual than what Juan Francisco Estrada has ever seen. He's never seen that type of foot movement. He's never seen that type of head movement. He's never seen overall this skilled of a fighter before. And that was a part of the reason why Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, of why he was so successful. In this prime, or even when he was past his prime, he was so much more fluid, light on his feet. He had so much movement. He just stood there. Couldn't really, he just didn't have... Well, he tried to outbox Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez on the back foot. That's what Juan Francisco Estrada will try to do when he feels that the offense is a little bit too much. But it wasn't going to help against Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez. Because because Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez was just way too fast, way too defensively sound, and it wasn't going to happen. And on top of that, he was he, he was whooping that man's ass. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez was putting punches and bunches together, and Juan Francisco Estrada eventually realized that if I'm going to beat this guy, I have to fight with this dude. Like, this dude was whooping my ass. I can't just sit back and try to box with this guy. I have to actually try to fight back. It's my only chance. His legs. Come on, man. I mean, at the age of 35... Okay, at super flyweight, you are absolutely ancient. It's a shame that guy was holding a title. Okay, it is what it is. But that's boxing for you, man. You got this dude hydrating 20 pounds, a snack athlete, you know, who just... And if Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez is with the snack program, more than likely he is probably also on PEDs as well. It's like moved up two divisions at the age of i don't know what 22 or something like that because he's growing rapidly he can't make the weight anymore and, and you got the worst commentator in boxing history calling him the smaller man oh my god it's so impressive what he's doing against this bigger guy <laughs> Chinny old shot, no legs heaven, fluidity gone, slow, stationary. Well, once again, this is where I have to disagree with a little bit. I mean, Mr. <laughs> Fight Film here is trying to act like Juan Francisco Estrada as if he just had completely nothing left. And I can't necessarily agree with that. I think that had he been in the ring with maybe some other fighters, now maybe I would have to watch his last performance. But from what I knew, Juan Francisco Estrada still was a very decent fighter. And many people were excited for this fight for a reason. You know, it is what it is. So I think that Juan Francisco Estrada, that he still had a little bit left. I think that had he not, that he would have not knocked down uh, Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez in the first place. And he still tried to put up a good fight as much as possible. But this was just something that he had never seen before. I mean, Rusty Estrada, who shouldn't have even been anywhere close to a fucking title in the last five years or so. I definitely can't agree with that, sir. To state that Juan Francisco Estrada has not deserved the title... Within the past five years, <laughs> I have to disagree with that. He wasn't even the championship caliber fighter for the last... That is definitely not true. Now, when you want to talk about certain fighters that still had a title that probably were no longer championship caliber, we take a look at a fighter, for example, like a Sergio Martinez when he fought Miguel Cotto. Because Sergio Martinez, his legs were done. And on top of that, the fight previously, he had fought Martin Murray, someone that really wasn't that well known. And a lot of people really thought that he had lost that fight. That's an example of fighting a fighter when they're completely done. You know, that's an example of a fighter that's washed up. Juan Francisco Estrada probably was not what he once was, but I can't really state that he was completely washed up here. It's just that this is the formula of boxing. It always has been. It happened with Rocky Marciano and Joe Lewis. It happened with Tyson Fury and Vladimir Klitschko. It happened with Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Oscar De La Hoya. It happened with Oscar De La Hoya and Chavez Sr., it doesn't mean that those fighters were completely washed up, but it also doesn't mean that they were at their absolute peak either. At the end of the day, once again, you will eventually get replaced. Five fucking years. Give me a break, man. But, you know, this is, this is boxing, boxing's hype machine, you know what I mean? 
Don't get me wrong. Bam is a good fighter, but... Can he I don't think Bam is just a good fighter. I think that he's a great fighter. And I think that he proved that against Mr. Juan Francisco Estrada. And once again, we're going to see how truly great that he is. Now, if we want to talk about, uh, you know, Juan Francisco, or excuse me, that uh, Mr. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, we still don't know how great he is or how he will be because we need to see him in bigger weight classes to see where he's going to go. That's something that's very relevant. But when you want to talk about, you know, just completely discrediting this win and talking about Juan Francisco Estrada not being, you know, overall, you know, uh, uh, you know, even a championship level caliber fighter, I can't agree with that. Knocked down by this version of Estrada, that's not a good look. And looking hurt too, not terribly. But I mean, his legs were, they went for a split second. You know what I mean? It wasn't a good look. And Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez got way too complacent. It reminded me a lot of when Lomachenko was knocked down by Jorge Linares. Lomachenko thought that eventually Jorge Linares was going to quit, and he thought that eventually he was going to have him, which of course eventually he did. But Linares had a little bit more fight <laughs> left in him than what he thought. Lomachenko went in there very straightforward with his hands down, and he got caught with the right hand right on the kisser, and he got knocked down on his ass. You know, it's the same thing that ended up happening here. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez could feel the blood overall of his opponent you know he could feel you know going for the kill and he could feel overall once again you know his prey basically waning down and getting weaker but he got a little bit too complacent and he let <laughs> and he let once again a right hand hit him square in the jaw but you know he did his thing he got the job done he recovered well and he responded very well to getting knocked down so it's good experience for him but let's not act like he beat Prime Mike Tyson, you know what I mean? Well, I don't think anyone's really acting like he defeated a Prime Mike Tyson. And Prime Mike Tyson, by the way, Mike Tyson is one of the more overrated fighters within boxing history. You know, no offense against Mike Tyson, but there's only so much credit that I can give you when in pretty much every single big fight of your career, you ended up losing. It is what it is. Calm down, everybody. This... This fight was so predictable. The writing was on the wall. It just... Uh... Well, it was, it was written on the wall for Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez to beat that of Juan Francisco Estrada. Definitely, I agree. But <laughs> once again, uh, it was the question of how is he going to do it? And don't you dare call him the smaller man for, for the next five years or so of his career, okay? Fucking hell. Anyway, it was a pretty good fight. Uh, as long as it lasted, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't have been. A guy that's so highly touted and is being talked about as pound for pound, getting in... Even if you if you were getting in the ring with an age past his prime champion, right? This guy was not a champion. He shouldn't have been. But like a legitimate but past his prime champion who's just been, you know, getting by on you know, whatever. Just just fighting cherry picked opponents or whatever. Well, I believe that Juan Francisco Estrada's last two opponents actually were Mr. Roman Chocolate Dito Gonzalez. If I'm wrong about that, someone correct me. So I can't necessarily agree with the quote-unquote cherry-picked, you know, overall, uh, <laughs> cherry-picked overall, uh, narrative, but, you know. But if a guy is this great pound-for-pound, pound, all this other stuff, right, and he's so much bigger than his opponent, he shouldn't be getting knocked down. It should be a no contest. The fight should at no point be fucking competitive, okay? Well, other than the knockdown, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Fight Film... The fight really was not that competitive. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez was whooping that man's ass <laughs> from pillar to post. It's just that he got a little bit too complacent and eventually he ended up getting knocked down. I understand the criticism that Mr. Fight Film is trying to put on Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez. But in my view, it's a little bit uh, too harsh. And he wasn't fighting it. Not a real champion. And the guy was 35 fucking years old. At super flyweight. Or whatever the fuck this was. Was it? Yeah. Bam's a good fighter. And he's a promising fighter. But he's got so much more to learn. And don't you fucking... Well, he has more to prove. 
he also probably has more to learn as well. Every fighter, everybody does. But uh, once again, in terms of the conversation about Mr. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez, do I believe that he is a top 10 pound for pound fighter? Absolutely, yes, I do. I would say that he is right there with Javante Tang Davis and Shakur Stevenson and maybe some other fighters. Uh, he is right there with them who would be in the lower part of my top 10 pound for pound. But of course, we're going to have to see uh, where he ranks right now. In my view, he is a top 10 pound for pound fighter. And of course, we're going to see how he has to build. So I would love to see the Inouye versus Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez fight. But Inouye also has another fighter to worry about as well. And that's going to be Mr. Bruce Shoe Shoe Carrington. We'll see where that goes. But anyways, that pretty much is about it for this video. I just thought that I would talk about that because some people, of course, are asking me to review Mr. Fight Film. But I just thought it would be very particularly interesting. And we'll see what other videos I can possibly review in the future. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later. And we'll see where Mr. Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez goes from here.